If you're super excited to get started with Procreate, but you're feeling a little bit intimidated by all the different features, I'm going to go through all of the different things you need to know to get started as an illustrator in Procreate in the next 10 minutes. Hi creatives, grab your iPad and your drawing pen and let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is to create your artwork. So all you have to do is click the little plus and then you can either choose from the pre-selected sizes like an E4 or you can choose to create your own by clicking the plus and then the little extra plus up in the top corner. You can either stick with pixels or you can choose to have, let's say, centimeters or inches as your artboard. You want to keep the 300 dpi because that shows it's a really high quality. And here you'll see that with the dimensions that you're choosing, let's say 2400 by 1200, you'll notice that the layers will go down. So if you want to make sure that you have a layered artwork where you're working with different layers to build up your art, you want to make sure you have enough layers. And if you need more layers, you just have to have a smaller artboard. So we're going to go ahead here. If you're creating something for print, you want to go over to color profile and you want to set it to CMYK. So that's just if you're creating for uh, print. If you're working in digital, you can stick to RGB. Great, so then we can choose create and we'll have our nice artboard here. The very first thing we're going to look at is the brushes. So if you'll just work with your brush like this, you'll see that you have a brush stroke. What you can do is you can go here to go back and regret it, or you can go forward to do the same treatment again. So what we can see is if you want to change the stroke width, so if you want to have a smaller stroke, you can change that here. So a smaller stroke or a bigger stroke. And if you want to change the transparency so that it's not fully as visible or you know see through this way so that you can create different layers you can work with this panel here for opacity as well if you want to change the brush appearance all you do is go to the little brush icon up in the top and there are so many different brushes that already come with the procreate set so you can go and explore these different ones and see which ones are good for you. Some of them are even, let's say, hair, where you're having a very specific effect, or you can do skin textures like this. So there's a lot you can play around with to make sure that you're getting the right effect. The ones that you're using a lot are gonna come up over recent, and so that's a great way to navigate and find the brushes that you like. My favorite one, if you wanna create texture, is to use the dry brush. It creates just a tiny bit of texture, but still has a very neutral style. If you want to use something for a very clean outline where you're not gonna have any texture, the technical pen is a great one to start with. And here you're having, as you can see, no uh, texture at all. You're just having a really clean outline. But you should go and explore these libraries in your own time. You can actually also go and customize these brushes. So if you click on the brush itself again, you can go and you create things like jitter, fall off and spacing. And these are just different ways that you can alternate it. So if you go and you play around with this, you can see that if we're doing spacing for this, because it's a very uniform style, we actually get dots. And so these are interesting ways that you can work, especially with textured brushes, to create a little bit more of your customized style brushes. You can actually do the same thing for the eraser. So the eraser is here. And so let's say we're drawing something that we're creating here. So we're drawing a little bit here and we want the brush that we're actually using to erase with to be textured. Let's say we're creating something interesting like this one. We can actually go and erase with that brush. So that's super interesting as a way to also create exclusion or negative space. Here it can be super interesting to let's say have different opacities and just create an effect that you're interested in. In the exact same way you can also alternate the thickness and opacity of your eraser so that you can get the effect that you're looking for. So now that we know the brush and the eraser we're gonna go look at layers. So we have layers up in the little top panel here and you'll start with the background color which you can go in and change by just clicking it and then choosing either from your color palettes which we're gonna have a look at or from the disc for example. You'll also start with one layer, and if you want to add more layers, you just click the little plus button. If you swipe to the left, you'll see that you have options to lock, duplicate, or delete the layer. If you just want to hide the layer, you just click the little box that we have here to untick it. And that way it will not be visible on the artwork that you're working on. If you want to rename a layer to keep things organized, you just click on the layer and you choose rename. Here you can now choose, let's say, line work. There's also a whole panel of options that you see if we just click on the layer. 
you'll see we have things like creating a clipping mask. Now, I'm gonna go into another piece of art to show you how that works. So let's say that I would like to create some shading for this cute bear illustration. All I would have to do is to go and create a new layer and then choose clipping mask. Now this means that what I'm doing here is everything that I'm doing here on this layer will go on top only of the artwork that we have underneath. So let's say that I would like to create this type of purple shadow, let's say, just to make it really visible. Then you will see that this is only going to work here, but it's not going to happen if I draw outside of this layer that we have underneath. This also gives us a little bit of an opportunity to show how you can actually work with different effects. So if you click on the little button here, so you'll see it says N, that means normal. You can go and change to, let's say, darken, multiply, all these different effects that you will also have in products like Adobe Illustrator. So let's say we choose multiply. Now multiply means that it's gonna be a little bit transparent. So if we pick a color that we're gonna work with for our shading, let's pick this one. Remember, this is an overlay mask. So what we will notice now is that because it's multiply, it's gonna pick up the color that we have underneath. So you'll see that this color and this color don't look the same because I'm not painting with this exact color. I'm using a multiply effect to pick up the color that is underneath. So that is a super interesting effect that we can use to create things like shadows, for example. Another really interesting effect is actually merging something down. So let's say you're working on one art piece and you would like all of the base colors to be on the same layer, but you've actually created them on different layers just to experiment. What you can do then is you can click on the layer and you can choose merge down. This means that these two layers will now merge and be on the same layer. Next up, I wanna show you the color picker because this is such a, a time saver. So all you have to do is to get to an area where you'd like to choose and sample the color, hold on your finger and it will sample the color and you will see this little swatch come up. This means that this has not changed and you can use that color to draw. You can then use the color to go and fill in things on your artwork. So all you have to do is drag and drop it to the section that's relevant to you. So next up I wanna show you the color palettes. So if we click the little color swatch, you'll see that you might be starting on this page, the color disc. You can also have these different options for how you want to view it, like the classic, where you can use the different slightly scales, harmony, where you can find matching colors that work really well together, values, where you can put in the hex codes, let's say you have a brand guide that you want to follow, and palettes, where you can save your different palettes. Now, I think it's really nice to save palettes because it saves a lot of time, especially if you're illustrating a lot in one style. All you have to do is click the plus, and you can click create new palette. This way you can then go back to your disc and you'll have all the colors here. So if you're sampling either from, let's say, a piece of art, a photo or something like that, you can just go and click here and it will be added to your new color palette. You can also create color palettes from, a, from the camera, from a photo that you have or from a file or just a photo from your, uh, from your iPad. As you're working on your artwork, you might also want to move things around. And so here you want to use the lasso tool. So all you have to do is zoom into the area that you want to edit, click on the little lasso tool, then you highlight it like this, and then you click on the little arrow to grab the piece that you like. You can then zoom out to whatever area you want and you can move it just as you please to whatever area fits your artwork best. As you have it selected, you can also, let's say, resize it. But I would say be a little careful with resizing in Procreate because it can tend to be pixelated. So at least if you're going up in size, you could have to watch out for how the pixels change. So this is a textured brush. So if we have a look at this, as we will let go of this, you'll see that it gets a little bit fuzzy around the corners. So I would say try to avoid resizing items as much as you can, but moving them is a great idea. If you feel like something is kind of right, but not quite, you can also use the liquify tool. So you can click on this little wand here and you go down to liquify. Here you can now manipulate the different areas to make sure that you're getting exactly the effect that you want. This is perfect if you're, let's say, working on a face or something where you really want to just tweak, let's say, the nose of a character. You can also add things into your artboard like text and images. All you have to do is go to the little gear icon and you can insert a photo. You can then select from, let's say, your own camera or your own files. So I could do that, for example or you can add something from a browser or from other places. 
Once you're happy with your artwork and you're ready to export it, all you have to do is click the gear icon, choose the format that you like, so let's say a PDF. You choose the quality, so I'll choose best. And you save it where you would like. So in my case, I like to save it to Dropbox to keep things organized. If you're super excited to start using your illustration skills, I have a video about how to use illustrations for branding in different ways. So I'm going to put that here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your projects. See you next time.